Alright, hello everybody. Welcome to my channel. This is Bala here. Um, so this is actually my first video um, related to kind of new, I guess, content that I'm going to be putting out. Um, so real quick, I'm, this channel is going to be focused on a little bit of EDC gear, especially knives. That's something I'm really interested in. Um, and I'll also dive into a couple other topics that I think are pretty cool, including some things like gaming. But I'll, uh, I'll make sure to organize the channel that way. So if you're interested in any of that, please feel free to take a look. Um, I'm, I am just starting out to YouTube, so I'm still figuring out what kind of equipment I'm using, but I'm learning as I go. So if you'd like to follow me on this YouTube journey, please feel free to subscribe and just leave a like on the video. If you have any kind of feedback or just recommendations on what to do, fee please feel free to put those in the comments and that should help me out a lot. All right, so you probably have seen this knife everywhere by now. This is an absolutely famous knife. It has been around for two decades, 20 years of this knife, and it, the, the design has stood the test of time and is still going. People are still interested in this. No one has gotten tired of it. This knife still remains a big hit in the knife community and the forums uh, to this day. And this is the, of course, the 940 Osborne, the Benchmade 940 Osborne. So this knife comes in at right about oh, 190 to 225 dollars. Of course, you're going to get the higher price on the actual Benchmade website. I purchased this knife from uh, Knife Knifeworks. They are a fantastic um, uh, retailer. If you guys, you guys should definitely go and check those guys out. Um, and I'll talk about why I think they're so great. Uh, in a moment here, but they are fantastic. They gave me a call telling me about what kind of equipment they had in stock, specifically the knives, what they had in stock, um, the quality of them, all the flaws. They, they like literally take a very close look at the knives that they give you um, if you want. You can ask about details about them. And I think that's a really important thing to do with Benchmade knives in particular. In terms of quality control, Benchmade is not, has not recently necessarily been known uh, for the best quality control knives. It's kind of this thing where you get the knife and you notice something's wrong with it, and then you send it in to uh, Benchmade, uh, which they have an amazing warranty, but you send it into their warranty and they fix it the second time. So if you kind of want to avoid that step, a good way to do it is either A, going into an actual store, like a brick and mortar store, and looking what's available and handling the knife on your own, and then determining if everything's right. Um, like, of course, checking your blade centering, blade play, and anything like that. Or in other ways, find a really nice retailer such as Knifeworks here um, and just kind of give them a call and see, you know, is everything okay with this knife before you ship it? Um, you know, blade centering, things like that. And I'm sure they'll be able to do that for you. I don't know many other retailers that have that kind of time and patience to do it, which is why I recommend Knifeworks so much. Um, they also give free engravings on some of their knives, which I got on this and I'll show you guys in a second. But um, I'll leave a link for their uh, website in the description below. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. This is just my honest review and I really think they did a fantastic job with the customer service side of things. <clears throat> right, so, um, so starting with the handle material, this knife comes, this Benchmade 940, at least the base kind of quote unquote base model, comes in this aluminum green color and I love it. It really stands out from other kinds of blades. Uh, the, the knives that I've owned and what I've seen around there, they're all like carbon fiber or black. And don't get me wrong, they're beautiful. Carbon fiber is amazing, and those black G10 scales look fantastic. And they look very, I, I get it, they have a very nice utility look uh, if you're going for that professional look when you're EDCing. But I just, this, this green really does stand out while still remaining subtle. You know, you guys have probably seen those kind of lower end gas station uh, zombie hunter knives that have that really bright fluorescent neon green color. And this is absolutely not that. The very subtle green that just, even if you keep it in your pocket and the top part sticks out, it looks amazing. And of course, we can't forget this beautiful purple anodized titanium um, uh, backspacer here. It just adds a little bit of flair to the back of the knife and gives it a lot of character. Now, I understand that this knife is extremely popular and a lot of people have it, but just holding it in my hands and looking at the color combinations and just seeing how the overall blade looks from the exterior, I can't help but feel like this knife is unique to my own. It just... Everything about the color, including the purple and green, the clip, the way the blade reflects in the light with the actual colors on the blade, on the uh, handle itself, I really do think it's a beautiful thing. So I know that the 940-1, which is the more expensive variant of this knife, comes in carbon fiber. It also comes in an upgraded steel, and I'll talk about that in a moment. I've handled both those knives uh, several times, and I still keep coming back to this one. Personally, the carbon fiber on the 940-1 just wasn't for me. I know a lot of people like that, and it is more lightweight. 
but that knife was missing this beautiful backspacer right here, and I'm just such a fan of this, I couldn't give it up. And of course, this is more affordable compared to that, um, so I picked this one up. The, there's also a G10 version, and I'm sure you guys have all heard this before, but the G10 version is a little bit more grippy, um, comes in black um, with some blue lines that go across the handle, and it looks pretty nice, but again, I'm a fan of this classic design. Uh, real quick, in terms of the clip, this knife does come with the standard Benchmade clip. Beautiful finish on here. I like how it's kind of looked like it's uh, weather-worn. I'm not particularly a fan of the kind of form factor that this knife takes up. Uh, it does chew up the pocket slightly, but not nearly as much as some of the other knives that I've owned. Looks like my light has gone out. My apologies here. Yeah, like I said, getting used to new equipment, huh? So, anyways, the deep carry pocket clip is available, and of course you could send it into Benchmade the next time you get a repair and ask for them to replace the clip. But from what I've heard from a, <clears throat> several friends is that putting the deep carry pocket clip on this knife in particular does create a little bit of a hot spot because of course that groove is now recessed at, but down further into the bottom of the blade and that does kind of dig into your palm a little bit. So of course, if you're not gonna be cutting for you know, hours on end, then it shouldn't matter too much. And if you prefer the deep carry clip, of course, go with it. That's one thing to consider. Now in terms of the actual blade material, and here you can see that free engraving that KnifeWorks has given me. This knife comes in S30V. Now S30V is a very common steel on these kind of, in this price range uh, for Benchmade, Spyderco, and other knife brands. I personally think that S30V is more than enough for most EDC tasks. Um, it still maintains a, uh, a good edge despite cutting for quite a while. Um, and it's, it's pretty fairly easy to sharpen compared to some of the other steels that I've handled. Of course, it's not gonna be as easy as VG10 to sharpen, but this will put you on the stones for maybe an extra, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes, and I have no problem with that. My, my main reason for not purchasing the 940-1 was that unlike uh, the S30V variant, that one came in S90V. Now, S90V is a fantastic steel. It has excellent edge retention qualities, um, but it was a little too much for me to handle in terms of sharpening. I just don't have that kind of time to sharpen a knife like that. I know many people will prefer the S90V for that edge performance and the blade performance, um, for that kind of steel, and it definitely can cut more than S30V while still holding that edge, but I'd rather have a knife that's slightly easier to sharpen at the end of the day, and that's just my preference. So you, you'll have to decide on what kind of blade steel that you want. But in terms of cutting performance, just from like daily EDC purposes, S30V is fantastic. Now for a quick size comparison, this knife, one of the, one of the beauties of it is that it packs up into such a small form factor but has that really nice uh, blade length. Now I'll show you as an example, I have a, this is a Spyderco Delica, all right? So this Spyderco Delica, you can clearly see the uh, change in size and it's not just the camera showing it. It's, there's really, you can see how much bigger the 940 is in terms of blade length. If we look at the cutting edge comparison, it's very evident. Now, what's interesting is that when I fold this Delica up and when I fold this 940 up, look at that. The Delica takes up a little bit, uh, it's, of course, it's much wider in the pocket, so it'll take up more space in that way. But you can see that the handle sizes are almost the same. So, I mean, of course, the 940 is going to have to be slightly larger, but the handle sizes are very comparable, yet the actual blade of the 940 is a lot longer than the Delica. Don't get me wrong, the Delica has many fantastic attributes to it, and I can make a whole other video on that. I'm just saying that a beautiful knife, but also having such so much blade in such a compact handle is a really impressive thing. Now, in terms of the uh, blade shape itself, there have been lots. Of, there's been a lot of controversy regarding the uh, the shape of this blade here. So many people think that this blade is a little too thick behind the edge for its size, and I'll explain that here in a second. But essentially, it's. I mean, you can see here, and this is a really nice swedge that comes on the top of the blade. But here you can see that it's very thick behind the edge. Well, not very, but fairly thick behind the edge. Yet, for this amount of blade, it's, it's barely larger than the length of my thumb, as opposed to the Delica, for example. Um, Delica does have some height to that blade. So what that means is it's not gonna be the greatest slicer, but in terms of just daily tasks, and again, I, I digress, this is a workhorse knife. This, should, this knife can be used for 99% of the things that you want to do and you won't have any problems using it uh, for that purpose. So, of course, having this thicker 
um, thicker behind the edge, of course, gives you more um, durability for the knife itself. And of course, the reverse tanto at the front of the blade obviously adds durability to the tip. But I really do think that I would prefer sacrificing slicing capabilities for keeping a nice, solid, and sturdy um, blade. So I really do think that uh, unless you're julienning apples or, you know, cutting hairs constantly, which, I mean, some of us knife nuts do, as you can see by my hand. I'm always testing to see if the knives are shaving sharp, but <laughs> that's one way to check if someone's really into knife sharpening, I guess. But I really do think that the blade itself has... Uh, definitely carries its own and is not lacking as a slicer per se. Unless you're comparing them side by side, it'll probably be easier to slice a piece of paper or you know, skin an apple for example with this knife compared to this, but barely, barely noticeable. Now in terms of the action and deployment, this is running on phosphor bronze washers. Um, you can clearly see here the standard Benchmade axis lock um, deployment style. It really does flick right out. The detent is amazing right here. Of course, I can give it a half and it doesn't go all the way, but with the right kind of uh, maintenance, and I haven't taken apart this knife uh, for a couple days now, and my pocket does have a lot of lint, but I digress. Thumb stud deployment is fantastic. And of course, you can do the axis lock deployment where you pull down the axis lock and just kind of flick the blade out like that, like that. And that works too, of course. Um, but and in terms of the centering as well, for a drop shut knife, I mean, I just hold it down and the knife just really drops shut. Of course, you have to hold it at the right angle, give it a gentle flick. The problem, one of the problems, uh, actually, I'll get to the problems in a moment here. <laughs> Let's keep preaching this knife for a moment here. <laughs> um, like, I, I digress. So the centering on this knife is perfect. Um, I know that that is becoming increasingly rare with Benchmade knives. You do have to kind of do a little bit of your own tweaking with the uh, pivot screw and pivot adjustment and make sure everything's clean inside, even when getting it brand new, which is a little disheartening. But once you get that all sorted out, or if you send it back uh, to Benchmade's warranty repair, you can get that fixed pretty easily and you have a perfectly centered knife. Um, so that's one thing in terms of the action. Another thing is that it's, it really does flick right out. Once you're, once you're deployed, there is some minor blade play, minor blade play. And I, trust me, I have tried for probably two and a half hours trying to fix what was going on. I cleaned the washers, I uh, adjusted the pivot screw, made sure that everything was in alignment, tightened all the screws, and of course, uh, adjusted everything. And still, there's just a little bit of blade play. Now, of course, I can get rid of that, right? But the knife would not become drop shutty. So, I'm definitely a drop shut fan. I like to fidget with my knives. It's just something I do. I, I really, I think most of us fidget with our knives more than we actually use them. But uh, that might be a bit of an overstatement. Just let me know what you do in the comments. I'm actually genuinely curious. Do you spend most of your time fidgeting or do you spend most of your time cutting? Uh, but of course, um, that was one of the problems, the uh, blade play with the knife. And I got it down to, there's barely any, I mean, it's, I, I, when I tell you I'm very particular about how the knives are built, I, I mean, there's just barely blade play, side to side, of course. No up and down blade play. If you have up and down blade play, you need to fix that instantly. That can become dangerous um, or just send it in to Benchmade's warranty and they should absolutely have that fixed. Um, so that's one problem with it. Another problem, and this is why... Uh, Knife, one of the reasons why I thought knife works was really good. So this blade in particular had a little bit of an uneven grind. And if you want to check if your knife has an uneven grind, carefully, please carefully, hold it up kind of close to your eye and see if the very tip of the knife, if there's a curve on either side or if it seems like the grind is uneven. You can also kind of eye it by looking at the edge and how it reflects across the light. You can see that here on this knife, one side of the knife, or sorry, one of the bevels is more deep cut so to speak, than the other. So they've kind of created an uneven grind on the knife. After about, oh, I don't know, 45 minutes on my uh, Sharp Maker stones, I got it down to a pretty reasonable edge. Um, and it's hair, it's of course hair shaving sharp, but that is of course a problem if, uh, if a manufacturer comes with a straight out of the box new knife and it has uneven grinds. But the beauty of Knifeworks was I, they gave me a call. They, I told them like, could you guys please check to make sure uh, these Benchmade knives are all good. Uh, or specifically this one, if there was any blade play or anything, please let me know. Uh, they gave it a very thorough check and they told me, yep, you have uh, an uneven grind. They offered a discount for this knife. So fantastic customer service to them. And of course, I'll say it again, with Benchmade knives in particular, I would highly, highly recommend 
that you handle the knife in person first. Just these days, unfortunately, the quality control of these blades isn't the greatest. Of course, their warranty is fantastic, and these are lifetime blades, but just you're gonna have to overcome that first step. It's kind of like that first learner's, or I guess experience curve that comes with these Benchmade knives that nearly every Benchmade owner has to go over. But once you cross that hump, I mean, these are truly blades that will last you a lifetime, thanks to that warranty service and just their excellent construction. You just have to get them fine-tuned the first couple weeks you own them. Uh, so handle the knife in person or contact a really nice retailer that you're purchasing from. I would not recommend Amazon. I've heard very mixed things from Amazon uh, sellers on Amazon, uh, whether it's clones, uh, replacements, uh, previously used knives, or just really bad uh, quality control. Definitely check with an authorized, like, uh, not authorized, sorry, just like a a well-renowned re knife retailer, like KnifeWorks, Knife Center. I'll put a link in the description for the ones I recommend. That's one thing. Um, another problem that I've had, kind of like the last problem I've had with this knife, is the lock stick. And I've pretty much run into the three most common issues with the 940. I would say the three most common issues with the 940, one of them is the uneven grind, and that's not with the 940 in particular, that's kind of a bench made thing. Recently, in recent years, I do think that their, their hand sharpening on those <laughs> kind of like belt sanders hasn't been the greatest, but um, that can be fixed with the right kind of sharpening set. Of course, it is disheartening. Of course, the other problem is the blade play. Some people say they have perfect lockup at the top and there's no blade play. I have experienced some blade play, so that's another problem that comes in a, not every Benchmade knife, but quite a few of them that you have to look out for and adjust. And finally, the lock stick. So the, the lock stick is, this comes with the, uh, all kinds of knives, but with the, for some reason, the axis lock system kinds of, kind of has it the worst in my opinion. So, I mean, if you see here on the back of the blade, and I can zoom in and show you guys, on the back of the blade, you have the, uh, I'm gripping this, the axis bar and it makes contact with the back of the blade right there. And if I pull that, it no longer holds down onto this edge of the blade and the blade can move. So as you can see here, when I, do that, it locks. And that area right there where it locks, there is a lot of lock stick that happens. If you notice, I am pulling down on this axis bar and only after a certain point, you can hear the click. You can hear that. That is the material not really fusing with the back of the blade, but sticking to the back of the blade. And I've cleaned it and I know you're not supposed to put oil on these kind of systems. You definitely don't want to put oil or any kind of um, wet lubricant on this track right here because that's gonna attract pocket lint and all kinds of dust within a matter of minutes of you cleaning it. So there have been solutions to this. Sometimes you're, a lot of people say this wears away after time. I've been carrying this knife for about a month now um, and it's still an issue. And I've, trust me, I have been flicking this thing to hell's end and the lock stick persists. Some people recommend taking a, just like a number two pencil or any kind of soft lead and literally taking the graphite and penciling it in kind of as a a dry, dry lubricant kind of, uh, you put it on the back of the blade here, and of course you, you kind of color in the, uh, the, the lock bar. And doing that will kind of serve as like a nice uh, lubricant and you'll have a smoother deployment. So that's one thing you can do. Personally, I would probably send it into Benchmade if the problem persists and it's unbearable. Lock stick isn't necessarily a bad thing, it just can get kind of annoying when you're fidgeting. So that's another thing. Now. Real quick, I'm just going to tie it all in and just quickly discuss why I think that this knife is the ultimate workhorse knife in this range, in this price range. So at under $200, you can get a ton of knives. You can get the Spyderco paramilitaries. You can get all kinds of nice Spyderco knives. Of course, you also have the Benchmade knives that are available, including the Adamas and other kind of models like that. I am by no means a Benchmade fanboy. In fact, I prefer in general, the designs of Spyderco. But with this knife, this Benchmade 940, I think it just hits all of those spots. It's the jack of all trades at this price point. It is not the greatest slicer. No, not by any means. The blade is not a slicey, McSliciness type of uh, type of deal. You're not gonna be able to whittle hairs um, right out of the factory unless you put like a crazy interesting bevel on this. It is thick behind the edge, but it's extremely durable. It will cut through cardboard. It will cut through whatever you need in your EDC tasks, unless you're doing some kind of surgery on like an eyeball. I mean, like at that point, like, you know, is the, is the knife even durable? Can you, you know, things like that. I, mean, I digress. 
So that's one thing. It's in terms of cutting performance and this blade shape and also the length of the blade, I think it's perfect in, in that sense. It may not be the most uh, pretty knife, but while combining this kind of utility edge and still having that kind of durability and at this size, the knife still is somehow at this price point, it looks like it should be worth more. The, the aluminum finish and that titanium backspacer with the anodization, and of course the really nice ergonomic handle, without making it feel kind of cheap, it does, when you hold this knife, you feel like you're holding something expensive, and that's a good thing. I can't say the same about the Delica. Of course, it's not at the same price point, but I'm, I'm just not a fan of this FRN material, and, and G10 as well. For the kind of EDC that I'm doing, I, I don't necessarily need that extra grippiness from the G10. I'd, rather have something that feels a little bit more premium. So that's that's one other thing. It, it's the jack of all trades in it. It does excel well in the in the aesthetics department. And of course, finally you have that really nice action. Once you get it tuned up right out of the factory and you 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 know, I mean, look, you can it's drop shutty for sure on those phosphor bronze washers. Once you get all of that figured out, I think it's a really good setup. And it may not be the greatest knife. It may not be the greatest cutter. It may not it's may not be the most beautiful knife you've ever seen. But at that price point, it combines all of those factors into one nice package. And I just think it does it really well. And it's a timeless design. You know, Warren Osborne's designs are beautiful. I love them. And this knife definitely stands uh, the test of time. For 20 years, this knife has been, pro you go on any forum and this is one of the most recommended knives from Benchmade and just general EDC purposes uh, at that price point. But um, yeah, so that's my review of the Benchmade 940. I know there's tons of reviews online of it already. I'm just a big fan of this and thought I'd share my thoughts, my two cents on, uh, on this knife. Um, in the future, I do have a really nice knife coming in and I'd, I would love to show you all that. It is certainly more uh, rare, and that's my dog, sorry. It's certainly more rare than this knife, but um, if you have any questions, whether it's about configuring your 940, making sure it runs smoothly, or if, you have, if you're having any problems with it at all, please feel free to let me know and I can try and help you out in the comments. There was, there was some troubleshooting that came with this knife, but I promise you guys, once you get over that hump, this knife is, is really great. All right, I apologize for that. I had a little bit of an audio error there, but uh, thank you for watching. Um, if you have any kind of feedback or any comments in general, please feel free to put them down below. I will read them and I'll take your feedback into consideration. I'm uh, just trying to put out some videos on the kind of gear and just some of my hobbies, things that I enjoy. And just share it with people and just, you know, create a space to discuss that um, off of the forums and whatnot. Um, but I do have more knives that I would certainly love to review. I mean, here's a little sneak peek. I'm not going to show the full thing, but <laughs> you may have been able to guess what that knife was. But I'll definitely put out some more videos. And um, even though these knives are commonly reviewed, I, I, I still put in my two cents and just see what other people have to say. Um, and generally create a new kind of space for people who are just getting into knives as well and kind of promote that kind of growth in the community. So if you have any feedback or anything, just feel free to put that down below. Thank you for watching. You guys have a good one.